right, everybody. Welcome to Endgame Sensei. And before I start berating these poor IMs, <laughs> we're just going to get a poll started. And uh, this will give them, we're going to chat a little bit before we even do the official, the official, official begin of the show. Here's a very basic question. White is losing. Oh, wait a second. Oh, it's such a jerk. Drawing. I can't even see the, unfortunately, I might have to do this over. Yeah. Um, and I just realized that I worked on this database forever today, making everything white to move, but I might have blown this on this one, but I can't even discuss how I blew it or else that might give something away. Um, this is a position that's in our endgame algorithms, but it could well be in the sparring, honestly. Um, there was uh, the original, one intention I have uh, was to create, in the same way I've got a rook endgame progression, for all the Rook endgames to create a collection of other kinds of endgames, like this one, where people would play a match against each other. So instead of it being like, okay, prove that you're drawing this or prove that you're winning this, you would have to um, uh, just play a match of a bunch of positions to kind of prove your valor <laughs> in this kind of position. You guys have any, maybe you have some theoretical knowledge of this position, but you might not and might just have an intuition. So what's your first take on this? You can go first because it'll be brief. I have no clue. <laughs> I've, I've never studied this position. Um, I, I vaguely know that there exi exist positions with rook and one pawn against queen that are fortresses. I don't necessarily... I'm not going to like read into you giving us this position, whether that means it's more likely to be a position where they're supposed to draw or where they're supposed to win. Um, I just don't really know anything. Okay. Kosi, any sense? Sorry, yeah. Um, I feel like it... Uh, my instinct is that I would be winning. Uh, I mean, I believe if the pawn's on the second rank, then it's, it's a dead draw like simple fortress, but with the pawn advanced at least one row, I think the queen has uh, a lot more room, but I don't think it's an easy win as far as I understand. I've never really looked at it. Okay. So yeah, I guess I will not immediately divulge the objective answer to the position, but I will say that whatever you believe about the position, it will still come down to some practical skill, both in the defense and the, uh, and, and the black play. And I think what we're going to do for this one is we're going to treat it kind of like the Rook endgame progression and do a one minute plus 30. And because it, it just, it's that kind of endgame where it's going to be at the end of a tournament, and, or an, and excuse me, end of a game. And also, you can gain time easily. One thing I will also say before we begin is... Black has 50 moves with the pawn not moving. If the pawn is lost or if the pawn moves, starts all over again. These guys know that, but I just thought I would put that out there. So we have the potential very much for uh, kind of a longest show. But I'm gonna, we're going to try to do this. We're going to have try to one side. Um, we'll, we'll play it out from one side, and then we'll play it out from the other. I shouldn't be talking like this because I got to give the official begin. I got the official begin. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, one thing I will say before we start officially, and that is that um, after this, we're going to talk Magnus. Me and Kosa have a difference of opinion. We're going to fight it out. We're going to fight it. Uh, we'll I'll talk more. <laughs> <laughs> Why it's so important to me that we have this conflict, but we're going to have it out after Endgame Sensei. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. 
Any other dojo news you guys want to bring up before we start the the actual actual show? Um, not much, not much. Um, let's see. I'm finishing up the second update for my King's Indian course, so I'm hoping to uh, publish that either today or tomorrow. Um, and then I got a tournament starting tomorrow. I'll be playing. Uh, actually, it'll be an open event, uh, kind of like a small open. It'll be 40 players, and everyone is like pretty much above like 2,000 or so. So pretty strong tournament. Uh, all the games will be live, I think, mm -hmm. on Chess.com, Chess24. So that'll be cool. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then after that, Kosi, is you getting a, finally a break from all your tournaments? Then I'll be taking a break. Yeah, long break. And then just training for a while. Okay, now, are you animals in the uh, chess.com live situation? I am. I... Okay. I'm just getting it lined up and then I'm going to start the show because it's so temperamental. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I already blew it. 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 No, it goes like this 130, unrated. And then we go pop. All right, it's all set up. Okay, animals. Let's start this show. All right. So, DM Hokey, get ready to cut it right here, buddy. Or maybe it's Braden now. We'll see. All right, here we go. Welcome to Endgame Sensei. Where two hapless IMs who have no understanding of the endgame slog it out in positions. They just move randomly. Who knows? Will we learn something from it? Probably not. But it might be kind of entertaining. All right. Before us, we have a position. And uh, the poll says this thing is drawing. Uh, and Evan Rosenberg says it's definite, White's definitely not winning. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say. Uh, Bruce thought maybe White was drawing. Kosia said maybe he was winning. Well, I'll we'll talk about it after they start. And what we're going to do is they're going to run it uh, once, and then uh, they'll run it back. So do you guys have any questions before this madness begins? Yeah, yeah. actually, do you remember what, what level we have this for in the program? Oh, thank you very much. So... We have a bunch of positions that people are playing out on, on and on Sundays we have tournaments to uh, give people the opportunity to play it out against their cohort. This is an example of a position I think it's very important to say there's a lot of practical skill involved and uh, you definitely want to be playing it against someone around your skill level. And so this is actually a 2400 plus a position, however, it's definitely a position that we, we could have used at a lower band as well. And if I get my way, if Kostya ever lets me have my way, and I'm allowed to create like a match of all these different positions, that this would definitely be one that everyone would uh, eventually play out. And so what we're doing here with Endgame Sensei is we're giving them the chance, and I'm just feeding these, them these positions cold, right? giving people a chance just to see how two hapless IMs would play out the positions. That's why people feel better about themselves after they see these chumps do what they do, right? So, all right. <laughs> Are you guys ready? Sure. Here yeah. we go. Let's hopefully, now I, I make fun of them, but when it comes to streaming, I'm not the best. And I always screw it up. They call me Boomer GM. Let's see if it works. Bam. Players not found. Hello, Kostya. Not found, buddy. Do you know how hard Helicosia it's for me to write that all out? Do you know how found. hard it is for a boomer GM and then you're not in the live chat thing? I am in live chess. You this is a disgrace. Chat. Are you a Hello Kostya? Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> all right, there he is. He, oh, there he finally got on live. Uh, 
Oh, okay. So, all right, they're going to mute their mics. Interestingly, Evan Rosenberg had a very strong opinion that this was not winning. Uh, Evan, it is definitely winning. Oh, why are the Crocs frozen? I understand why people are asking why it's live. I'll tell you guys what. Chess.com has a funny thing where I have to be on the page live or else it's like no good. So um, there it is. I'm now got my double boards. Oh, I'm sorry about that brief glitch. Um, and the clocks should now be moving. Yeah, chess.com is like one of those jealous girlfriends. Like if you're not looking at her directly, she's just like, boss, that's no, no good for me. I can't deal with that, you know? So <laughs> that's why, that's why um, the clocks are frozen. You got to be looking at her directly for her to do her thing. <laughs> Amandala, thank you for being here. I hope Amandala tolerates my crass humor. Now, this one, though, obviously, let's just say that the queen and the, the king and the rook flipped from the original position. And is that going to make things tougher? Um, king c5 would definitely be... Oh, okay, rook d3. Um, ooh, that's a controversial move. That is a controversial move. But you can see that this is the kind of thing that white is going to need to do when black puts him in Sukhswa. So there's obviously queen f1, Kosti's looking at. But a simple move like king b5, threatening king c4, and then imagine rook d4, king c5, and then do you want to play something like rook a4? You kind of probably don't. Um, if you ever play like rook e4 in those positions, then queen f2 is going to pop the king really fully away from the pawn. Queen h1, kind of weird. But I think his intention is rook d4, king c5, tsukswa. Oh, Mandela's put me in the doghouse. <laughs> you heard I was a philosophy major in college. I, I did my PhD in philosophy. And I think somewhere on the University of Heidelberg server, somewhere buried, buried in the vault. It's there. It's there. All my hard work. No one reads PhD theses. Kind of a bummer. People work on them forever and then no one no one ever reads it. Whereas you do a YouTube video. Oh man. <laughs> You're gonna get some people. Alright, so King C5, Rook D4, Queen G2 would be a practical way to just pose white a question. A YouTube video on my thesis. Um, right, so I think Kos is doing what I'm doing. And then, yeah, like, you know, one of the things about this endgame, and a lot of endgames, is I don't think you should overthink it too much. So, for example, rook d4, queen g2 will just give white a simple question, you know. Namely, boss, <laughs> what are you going to do? And it seems like bad news, too, because one thing, for example, rook d4, queen g2, you can see like rook a4, it's too frisky because queen f2, king e4, queen h4, and we're all done, all right? Because they'll rook o hang so. GM doctor cry, yeah. Back in the day in Germany... I guess even today still, you, there was this thing where you could get a, two doctor titles. So I was dreaming of being doctor, doctor. You know, that was before I was a GM and all that stuff. So I, it, but it'd be pretty impressive to be doctor, doctor, GM, you know. Okay, so here we go, queen g2, as expected. Very good. Very good. 
And um, <laughs> my medallions are flitzy clothes for chess players. Yeah, where's my medallion, boss? Let's go get my medallion. <clears throat> yeah, you know, this, this medallion has been a source of a lot of grief within the dojo because coast to coast, he didn't get a medallion, man. He didn't get one last year. And I got a lot of power from this medallion. Its energy source is somehow worn off. And Neil Bruce won't re-up the power source. He won't do anything for me. And so I don't know. I just know when I got this thing, whew, I was a new man. And Coast to Coast, he felt, first of all, he deserved it, which he didn't. Thank you very much. And then when he saw the immense just electrical power flowing through me after I got the medallion. I mean, I understand his disappointment. So there's a little friction in the dojo, you know, when that went down, a little friction. In general, the dojo's okay, but you know, when one guy gets a medallion, another guy doesn't, nah, it can be kind of hard. It can kind of be hard. <laughs> Charlie Silva, thank you so much. Charlie Silva. Okay, here we go. Uh, wait, what just happened? Time out. Let's see what happened. Queen G2, Rook E4. And now Coast to Coast goes back around, which certainly makes sense. However, wouldn't have Queen F2 been like uh, the Lord's work right there? Like Queen F2, boss. Doesn't the king, he has to leave. <laughs> he has to leave. Game over, Coast to Coast, isn't it? Yeah, Queen F2, boss. I, I think that's it. Game. Game. So I don't understand, but let's just see what happens here. By the way, we are at move 18. So uh, Mr. Proust has got 22 more moves to suffer with that pawn not moving. Now, does this also win? Yeah. And Queen F2 is just, isn't that easy? Now it's easy because there's no King E4. So I think rook b4 makes black's life easier. Yeah. Black just wanted to get this position, pose a question, and he did. And now queen f2 is winning because uh, there's no king e4. I don't know why you do queen f1. Queen f2 just prevents king e4, and then you win the pawn, and then we, we, we do the king and rook party. Now, the, the king and rook party isn't going to be easy, too, because the king's going to have to go to g4 here. I think Mr. Proust missed this. Mm. As I think, indeed, Mr. Rosenberg is asking a fair question. Let's go back for a second. What would have happened on rook d4? Indeed. And that would have been definitely stronger. Jesse? Jesse yeah? You want me to resign when it's queen against rook? No, no, no. Play it out, boss. Or play, play it out. out. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Thanks. Um, yeah. And then we have to create the um, preconditions for getting the king, the black king, around. So I think it would go rook d4. The, the way I understand it, anyway, it would be like rook d4, queen f2, here, 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 check, king up, and then over here. And it's really difficult to, yeah, not have that king excommunicated. Or not, well, to not let the king through. But definitely, uh, this, you're absolutely right. Evan, that that was much better. Now, one of the things I want to stress is, if you get this position, do not, it's important to see that you should not become full of despair. <laughs> it would be real easy to become full of despair, too. Um, and I don't like Rook F4, it's almost like, it'd be great if we had a better move. I'm not sure we did, because now after King E5, King Rook F5 check, King E4, Black is in the process of pushing us back to the 
final rank, which is really hard to defend. There's like a couple dirty tricks that we can still do, but um, it's difficult. Basically, I'm, oh, then then it, then the despair can truly set in. So this is a difficult moment for our good friends here. Mr. Fear, thank you for subscribing. Um, and I'm going to try to do a little bit more streaming in the days ahead. I've been doing a lot of dojo stuff. And one cool thing that I guess I can make an announcement with is... So Kostya did this really cool... Um, what are we going to call it? Really cool King's Indian course that he's released the first part of. And what I'm going to do is do a kind of like a refurbishing of the aggressive repertoire where I'm going to try to make it look like Kostya's course. Like if you go on the site, like Kostya's thing has a cool thumbnail and everything and it's a little bit more organized. We're trying to make that openings page look good. We'll probably put some kind of... Uh, well, actually, it's not a problem. But we are going to get like our own dojo page on Chessable. So Kostya's course will be first, and then I'll probably do the aggressive repertoire, and we'll kind of take it from there. Um, so that's what I've been doing, but I want to do some streaming. And actually, tomorrow I'll be on at noon. And me and my student, Jamil are going to do classic games. This is a selfish thing for a teacher like myself to do. So we're looking at my sensei, uh, Smyslov's games. And it's been great. It's been great. And I really, of, of all the things we're doing in the program, there's a lot that are people haven't, when you look at the scoreboard, they haven't been doing that much of. Um, and this, the, the classic games, you know, it's cool to do it with another person, but you don't have to. Um, anyways, what am I trying to say? That's a cool thing I'm going to be doing at noon tomorrow night. Also, when we first started the dojo, I was doing the training program. I was doing these streams where I was just like answering people's questions. And I want to do at least a couple more of, of those because like you look at our Discord, sometimes people are losing their minds with <laughs> different questions that I'm like, wait a second, I need to talk this through, man. Yeah. Um, one thing, too, that we're going to do, and that we've been working on, is we are going to split the lower, the, the bands under 1,000. So we have two bands of 600 to 800 and 800 to 1,000 that are just too, it's too long of a jump. It's, that's a hard uh, jump to do, 200 points. So we're going to split it into 100-point bands. We're kind of set to do that at the moment. Um, yeah, so that's a cool thing we're working on. Okay, Kosi Kos, finish this out, buddy. Finish this out. Okay, looks reasonable. We're anticipating something like Rook F1 now. It is possible to blow this. There's no doubt it's possible to blow this. And the simple thing that Black wants to do, of course, is to punch his king in there a little closer. So like king e3, rook f1, and then something like queen g6. Sukswang. Sukswang. Also, I want to do a video about the Polgar mates. I am doing it myself. I'm doing it again. And uh, that's a really cool thing that I'm really encouraged. Like, one of the things I was worried about with the program was that people were going to be so sad that they had to do the pole guard mates. You know, just so sad and being like, well, what is this? Yada, yada. But um, I'm hopeful. <laughs> or at least what I'm seeing is people are definitely, or they seem to be doing the work. At least some of them. And those that are doing it, 
uh, are um, definitely improving. One cool thing actually about the training program that I'm going to try to get Figius to do. Figius is our, our, our scoreboard master. Is we have a thing now which is um, average rating gain per cohort member. Really cool thing that uh, Figius and DM Hokey created. And that's cool, but I think it would be even cooler to be like average rating gain per box checked. Because there's a lot of people in there who either aren't checking the boxes or maybe they're not, either they're because they're not doing it. I have two students who are simply too lazy to check off their boxes. One's a boomer GM. He's not even in the FM. Or it's in the FM but he's a boomer in the way that he just has a hard time getting on there. Anyways, you see what I'm saying? Like, there's people who are checking off the boxes, and then when we look at who's graduating, it's definitely the more people who are checking the boxes, the more uh, are, you know, making gains. Pumpkin the cat, definitely. They are hard, dude. There, do you like that sound? Boom, boom. <laughs> there are, dude, and um, especially when you get into like the 1800s, ooh, there's some tough ones, man. And like early on in the process, I, I do them in 100, 100 chunks, 100 problem chunks, and now, you know, when it gets to like the 1800 level, 1800 being the number of the problem, like 18 to 19, I have to do 50 chunks, and I, I, sometimes it's so hard for me that I just start losing my mind. Now, this is a, this can get tricky for black. He has to be careful, but king g4 looks, looks hard to meet. If you, basically, if you end up putting your rook on f7 or f8, it's going to get lost. So now... And, the, and whenever you put your rook here as a practical problem, you got to think, well, is dude going to pop me here? Now, here's, some, here's an example of something. Here, I'll give you an example of something that could go totally wrong. Let's say queen f3, king g1, and whatever you do, don't do that move, boss. Bam! Stalemate, you know? So that's, that's the kind of terror that uh, can await you in a position like this. My rule of thumb, I'm, I've been meaning to do a video on this for a long time, and Mitch Fabian is so mad at me because I don't, I, I say I'm going to do these videos. Boss, I got a lot of things going on, okay? You hear that thing? And, and Neil, this thing needs a re-up, boss, all right? Needs a re-up. Anyways, so, <laughs> um, well, I was saying something. <laughs> queen e4, king f2. I would do a video and the queen should hang out on a square like e4. And then the king is the one who comes in. And the way I think about it is like, think about it like a, the king is the one doing the jab if we're in a boxing match. And the queen is the kind of the roundhouse kick. She should hang back. She should hang back. So queen e4, uh, let's say, just as an example, if king h2, king f2, that's a known position. And king g3, therefore, is the one that's uh, a little bit more testing, let's say. But king g3, um, like, yeah, there's a lot of painful things that black could do. On a practical level, the move queen d5 is pretty good. But again, king g3, the reason I would definitely play king g3 is it might sucker black into going queen f3, king h2, king f2, and then that rook h3 trick that I show. Not what you wanted. One other thing I just want to say, I've played some tournaments now with this 30 second increment. As you see, you can play forever. You can play forever. So some of them take me 30 minutes too, man. Some of them are truly hard. I have done it. This is my fifth time or so doing it. So I've done it many times. There are still some problems that kill me, you know? And obviously, um, the more you do it, the easier it's gonna get, but you're never gonna be the complete master or something like that. I think he can uh, get that position. Well, he should be able to get that position that we were just talking about.
Yeah, skeptics. I think it's 1471 to be precise. 1471 is the problem at which things get truly, truly magnificently hard. I like the way Kostya's thinking about this. No, no rush. No rush, boss. No rush. How come the more my rating goes up, the worse I become? Well, boss, it's not true. It's not true. You're getting better. My sense here is queen d5 is a nice little zook swung move. Rook g2, king e3, really tough for the dude to move. Very difficult. Okay, so now queen, uh, king h2, and then we're going to hope that Kosya doesn't play king f2 after that. I don't think he'll do it, okay? I don't think he'll do it. He better not anyway. He better not do it. Somebody told me, or DM Oki said, was, we we're talking about like publishing stuff, on, um, anyways, the whole complicated Discord thing. But he was saying Michiko has a server, and I was like, oh, I didn't know that. So there's some server that Michiko has that I need to belong to. All kinds of servers out there. Um, and I gotta say, you know, I'm a boomer GM, so the Discord, eh, it's hard. It's sometimes hard. But with the training program, I've been, the, with our other Discord, I never really got fully into it. It was Kosio who was doing a lot of the legwork there. But with the training program one, it's a little bit clear to me like what is going on. Though sometimes the conversation just goes, you know, goes, goes like crazy. Goes crazy. Man. Oh, whoa, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing, Mr. Proust? Have you lost your mind? Have you lost it, buddy? Wow. That's a fancy pants move right there. Okay. No. I said, I don't like Kosha's form. When I do this video eventually, I'm sorry, Mitch. I'm sorry it's taking me so long to do the video, okay? I really think the queen needs to be on one of the central squares, like e5 or d5, and then the king needs to come in like the jabber, you know? All right, we should say for this next phase of the game, it's really important, that when did the pawn was the pawn get lost? A move 20. So we are now at move 34. So 14 moves into the 50 move rule. Yeah, so he has got uh, 36 left. Main two is really great. I'm gonna do this video about why I think it is um, one of the most beneficial things you can do. Main twos. Kosa, can you finish him off here, buddy? It's getting a little painful. <laughs> You're already broken him down, boss. You're already broken him down. Now, he better not be going no queen F3 business on me. That'd be very disappointing, Coast to Coast. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, it doesn't look good. This is still, of course, totally winning. But he's got to be like queen H4, king H2, queen H4, king G2, queen E4, king somewhere, king F2. We're winning. Okay, maybe he's going to do it now. Put the queen on E4, Coast to Coast. E4, buddy. Okay, fine. Fine. This is Crispy Critters here. <laughs> that Bruce doesn't resign. He's never resigned. He, he, he doesn't take draws either. He was playing Alex Yermolinsky once. Three, three, I mean, Alex Yermolinsky. 
genius of the end game. They had three pawns versus three pawns, and, and Proust was still trying to win it. The same pawns were on the same side of the board. What are you doing, Mr. Proust? He's just like, I like to play. I like to, I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm crazy like that, man. <laughs> this one, I don't know what you're supposed to do, Mr. Proust. This one looks bad. Um, I want to say with this queen versus rook, I don't think it's something you memorize. I think there's some basic ideas that you can get, but memorizing, mm, no, I don't think it's possible. It's too, it's too big. It's too big. Well, Mr. Bruce, you might, you might want to resign, buddy. Mr. Bruce over there in Hawaii, he's eating this pina colada. He doesn't drink, but, you know, so he does his virgin pina coladas out there. <laughs> All right, so rook a1. In general, when this happens, that rook goes. So I think, yeah, queen g5, queen h6, queen g7. Now he can resign. Oh! Michiko invited me to the boom room. Let's go. I'm going to join the boom room. Hey, how about that? I'm part of the boom room. Okay. There it is. I'm not that part. I'm not, don't, don't have that many servers. I got a chess com server, chess dragons, which is uh, Eugene Perlstein's. And now I'm part, of course, training program. And now I'm part of uh, Michiko's boom room. How about that? There you go. Now I gotta I gotta show that board or else the clocks won't move. Okay, here it goes. They are done. Let's run this thing back. All right, let's go here. Bop. Match. This time, Hello Kostya will be white. D Bruce will be black. And we'll go 130. Unrated. Pop, pop, pop. Are you guys ready, my friends? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Did I blow it? Oh, wait a second. Oh, I did blow it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I can do this. I can fix it. I can fix it. Pop. I hope this works. Yes, it's going to work. All right, there it is, my friends. Hello, Kosia is down at the bottom there. And let's see what we got. So that one, by the way, it was a good example where David made it easy with Rook B4. However, I normally yell at these chumps for being terrible at the end games. It's a very typical mistake, though, because you're under pressure and uh, it's easy. It's so easy. That's why I want to stress that there's. it's not just uh, black who is the one who is doing the fancy work here. White is also doing things. Mm -hmm. Queen G2. I approve of this message. Now I got to get this thing or else chess.com gets uh, loopy with me. Yeah. Good. And so now imagine king d2, queen f2, king d3, queen e1, and uh, we will eventually get our queen d1 in. Mm -hmm. Infernal Kush makes an important question. With everything back one, i.e. let's imagine the pawn e2, is it a draw? Yes. And the reason, it's a very simple draw too. The, the reason is that then the um, black queen can't get around like, like she is now. She's not going to be able to get around. And in general, if you move the pawn up, let's say to e4, then it's even easier because there's more space for the queen to mess around in, behind the pawn. Good. So far, I would say this is all best play or something like that, at least from a human point of view. Now, I preferred... King f5 a little bit, but this sh this should this poses let's say similar problems. 
Yeah, now you gotta go all the way over there. But you know, we the other way we'd have to go to g5. Same same kind of thing. Queen d1 is next. <laughs> That's right, Infernal Kush. You don't want to play e4 and move one. Yeah. <laughs> Get this problem. Um, yeah. Okay. So, rook d4. We're anticipating queen d1. King, if, king c3, queen e2. The game's practically already over. So you gotta go like, uh, you gotta go on some adventure with your king. And then it becomes kind of a problem, right? It becomes a problem. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard immediately, honestly. go Evan Rosenberg's at the Marshall Chess Club that would be pretty cool yeah nice nice oh man you know it is I, I had a lot of great times when I was a kid I got to play in the under 16 at the old Manhattan Chess Club and then at the Marshall there was these uh Essentially, the predecessor of the U.S. Chess School was held there. Really cool thing for me to go to. This was before internet, so it was like, you know, my first time having a GM in the same room as me. Now, that seems like a terrible move. That's just, that's a god-awful move, Rook D5. Just god-awful. It just shows that he doesn't understand. That's <laughs> god-awful, Kosiakos. Now you're making it easy for him. So in the same way... Uh, yeah. The other one was a tactical mistake. This is a positional mistake because here you're just letting the black king in and once that king gets in, it's a wormer. That king's going to worm and squirm and germ and snurm, you know? <laughs> they come from behind, that's right. It's coming from behind. <laughs> king f4, I think, would have been more testing. That's right. And now if king f4, probably like queen g2 or something like that. Queen f2 is also a good move. And part of the problem with king c3 is now the white king cannot go back to d3. And that's a problem uh, in a lot of these variations where the black queen starts messing with the white queen, the king. I think queen g2, it's, that pawn is going to, that pawn's, Toast. Queen G2, pawn is toast. Yeah. No puedo play like this. Well, at least it's instructive that we saw the king get in. Because I, I think I think there's an intuition to be like, well, is it that big of a deal if the king gets in? But now when you see it, it's like, oh, man, king gets in, major hassle in the castle. Now, I think Evan Rosenberg's been playing uh, some aggressive repertoire for white. Boom! Yeah, that's the real deal, my friend. That's the real deal. So your queen f2 is the obvious one. Queen g2 is also really painful. I don't know what you're supposed to do on either of those moves. Full-on Grifovich. I like queen g2 best. Just give him the old Duke's one. Give him ye old Zugzwang. Queen F1, okay. Seems to force King E4. So it's a lot, oh, this is fine. He's just, he's doing a little checky check that I'm not sure why he's doing it so fast anyway. Maybe he's going to go king e4, queen f1, which would be fine. There you go. He's playing fast. 
He's feeling it. He's feeling it. Yeah. <laughs> French was the weenie. <laughs> <laughs> What's the aggressive repertoire for black against 1e4? Good question. And basically, the way it's going to work is definitely it's going to be uh, Kostya's King's Indian course, and then against d4, knight of 3c4. And then for um, e4, it's honestly a little bit more complicated what to do uh, to get an aggressive position. Honestly, I'm not even sure it's possible. My student, uh, James Altucher, has been playing the modern, and it's, is it an aggressive opening? Kind of, I mean, it's insane. <laughs> it's insane. So that might be it. Ah, uh, Shevestnikov, yeah, maybe Shevestnikov, that's right. The French are Carl Cobb. <laughs> no, you didn't think that, buddy. You're just talking smack, huh? No need to talk to smack. So actually, we bring them on. I won't tell them what we said about the evaluation. We'll see if they've changed their minds about it being... Uh, David was thinking maybe it was a draw. See if they've changed their minds at all about the position before we break it down for them. To me, actually, I just want to stress something. Uh, it's a good example of how to learn endgames or how not to learn them. Because when I was a kid, like that whole morass of variations, it just felt like, what am I supposed to do with that? Whereas if someone just explains to me, bro, this is what's going on, then it's like, oh, oh, I get it. <laughs> I get it. Same thing with the pure queen versus rook thing. You can't just like try to memorize some long line. No, you get some basic ideas of how it goes. Inferno Cushion. David thought this was maybe a draw and Coast to Coast maybe already knew it being uh, that it was uh, a win. And I guess after Queen F3, he's going to play E4. I don't know what he's going to do. That looks like it. And um, then... It's easier, but you know, we'll see, he still has to prove it. By easier, I mean, when the pawn goes to e4, it's easier for black than when the pawn's on e3. Some say endgames are a river. Okay, okay. Um, I definitely wouldn't say the I love the French, but I wouldn't call it an aggressive opening. I would because it's a, a a crouch opening, like the Karo Khan. It's a crouch opening. I like the idea of the Shvesnikov as an aggressive uh, opening. I don't know who would uh, Nidorf, of course. Nidorf, you know, the whole thing with all of the Sicilians is you're trying to survive. If you survive for a little while, then you have these positional pluses, which mean you'll win the late middle game if you survive to the late middle game. So it's not quite grabbing the initiative in that way. It's like you've stolen something from white, but white, and in return, white has time for it. The pelican is a slightly different move order in my understanding of El Pelican. Of El Pelicano. Mm. Yeah, and just to put this on like um, something to remember, basically a, a key key fortress position is the. White has a pawn anywhere on the second rank and a rook holding the third. You're golden. It's not even complicated. 
Um, and then basically it's lost with the pawn on the third rank, obviously lost in the fourth rank. There's then some weird complicated positions that can happen with the pawn on the seventh, but in general, those are also lost for the person with the rook. Yeah. Okay, well, we still got to see some um, skill here. I would say the easy move to play would be queen g3, king f5, king c4. Yeah, it's a real bummer. It's a real bummer. We have seven, fine. So notice that um, if the rook leaves the D file, we're gonna start heading over to like D3 and such. Yeah. Kos is in full concentration mode. I like it. Uh, Accelerated dragon is cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, all those dragons are all right. Even the even the dragon dragon. Maybe the dragon dragon would be the truly aggressive repertoire. There is nothing wrong with the dragon. I know people think they're gonna die. They play the dragon. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with the dragon, son. All right, queen e7 would be our textbook move, just so our king will get over to d3. Time and off is definitely fun and weird. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Um. I don't, and that's Seth. I want to say I don't think there's any opening for Black against e4 that truly grabs the initiative. Arguably, also the King's Indian doesn't grab the initiative. However, with the King's Indian, you got to say that Black is in many variations playing for mate. So that's why it definitely feels, to my mind, like an aggressive uh, repertoire move. Okay, here we go. So now, at least from a theoretical perspective, this should be easier for Mr. Black. Now, there, king e3, I'm sure it's fine. Queen b7 followed by king e4 looks good. Um, we could do it right now, too. Could start with queen d7 doesn't change much I guess yeah white uh, black obviously has to be a little careful that the pawn it's still gonna be winning if you easily get it to the sixth rank but you don't want to mess around too much <laughs> right it's time to end it it's time to end it coast to coast he's definitely playing pretty quickly Okay. Queen f5 looks compelling. This looks very, that's even better, even better. Yep, and there it is. Boom, king e4, we got it. I'll say this is somebody, um, one thing about the, this is a dirty trick if queen e5, rook e6. Um, one thing about the aggressive repertoire that I like for white is the lines that I give are in a lot of ways simple, like let's call them system based and don't require too much memorization. Um, and I think you could learn the dragon in a similar way. But it's tricky, especially like some of the knight or if there's so many lines that kind of go, go really deep, you know. And then 
Yeah, there's a lot of, oh, yeah, ugh. <laughs> there's a lot of theory going on. And I remember when I played the Sicilian, for I played it for a long time, um, it was so much more work than what the French ended up being for me. The French was really easy to learn. So again, the, the king wants to be the jabber. The queen wants to hang out on a square like e5, and queen e5 right now is certainly a good move. To prevent the dragon, or just make it bad. Um, I don't know about that. I mean, that's true of all the Sicilians, especially if... You'd like in the aggressive repertoire, we're playing two knight c3. Um, and one of the things actually I like about it, the aggressive repertoire, is I knew long ago that it was going to be paired with the King's Indian. And so there's a lot of ideas, like when we play the Grand Prix against the Sicilian, we are um, using a lot of King's Indian ideas with the Grand Prix. What is going on coast to coast? Not coast to coast is going to fart around a little bit. Let me just give it a little update. When, when was the pawn? The uh, pawn was recently lost. So it was only like five moves ago. He's got plenty of time. The tall caro thing. Amazing, dude. Amazing. And I think that's going to be the first thing I work on. Queen d5 followed by king g5 or something. Easy. Easy. Sneezy. You do other things too. Queen d4 is always a good move. Not queen d4 actually messed. Just put that queen nice in the center. Then we get ready to walk the king over with king g5. The reverse mora. I don't even, hear, I don't even know what that means. Um, will I recommend reverse Sicilian against C4 to reach positions similar to Grand Prix? Um, well, maybe. Uh, there's two things that you could do against C4. You play straight up King's Indian, and that's the simplest thing, especially for people who are going to be learning Kostya's King's Indian. Or a tricky thing to play against C4 is to play D6, and this throws off a lot of people who maybe have like some funky thing prepared against the king's indian because on c4 d6 d4 you got to be concerned about uh, e5 and if they were a sameish player they might not want to play knight f3 so you could go imagine c4 d6 and if you're playing king's india it doesn't matter you just play like uh you just play your you just play your normal business if they play knight f3. But that's just a move order question, basically. You can also play c4 e5, absolutely. And that's, you know, as long as you understand the King's Indian, it's a very easy thing to do. Benko, here's the thing about the Benko. Back in the day, everyone played d4 followed by c4, which enables the Benko. Very interesting uh, opening. But now, um, the amount of people playing d4, c4, it's not, not, not what it used to be, you know? So you could spend a lot of time, and I've had students have this problem, you could spend a lot of time learning a bunch of Benko stuff, and then you know, you're kind of out of luck because you just learned all this stuff for I don't know why. Same thing, honestly, with the Sicilian a little bit because there's so many, uh, especially, well, at any level, honestly, but there's so many anti-Sicilians that don't allow you, let's say you wanted to be a Shvestnikov player, you know, you're going to learn a lunch, bunch of stuff with the Shvestnikov, but then, problem, <laughs> you might not get it, buddy. You might not get what you wanted. Okay, Coast to Coast. Can we finish this guy off, buddy? Can we do it, bud? Queen d4 followed by king f5 looks reasonable. Uh, 
London a lot less. Possible, yeah. Um, one thing that's interesting about something like the London is Magnus hasn't been playing the London recently. So, like, when you get a top player like Magnus playing it, even if people are not aware of... Uh, the even, Like, let's say you're at the, I don't know, 1200 level, and you're not even aware that Magnus is playing the London. It doesn't matter. It, like, filters down. So, um, yeah, that kind of has a filtering effect. Something like Shevestnikov, when uh, Kramnik was playing it, then it would filter down, like Shabalov was playing it, and then there was a bunch of people. It's just like this chain of imitation that happens. Um, then we were talking about D4-C4. Um, that was all going down for decades because everybody was playing it. Kasparov, too. So that was like when I was a kid, it was just assumed that that had to be the only way to play for white with d4. <laughs> I'm going to have to look at that Nordebeck game. Okay, queen b8. We're doing fine, coast to coast. We're doing fine, buddy. Mm. Poor Carl wanted to. Now that kid, though, that kid is really good. Let's go look at the 2700 list just quite briefly here. Oh, man. Carl Juan has fallen down to ninth in the world, my friends. Oof. Oof, ninth. Ouch. He's just some common chump. Ooh, that stings. That really stings. Mm. Well, and we're about to talk about the great... Great Magnus struggle along with Ding and Nepo. And just right after this game, actually, we're going to take a quick break. Mm. Yeah, Fabi, man. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I, could, I couldn't tell you what's going on with Fabi. Now, I will say this. Coast to coast, buddy. That's not looking, not looking like as good as we wanted it to look. You know? You're not. You haven't put him in a way yet, boss. It's okay. It's okay, buddy. I understand. It's, it's not like it's over or something. I'm just saying you got to put him away, boss. You got to put him away. End this fool. For the sake of us, we're sitting here. We're sitting here watching this stuff. Come on, buddy. Can you put it away, dog? it is. More, more nasty nest coming at us here. Lots of, lots of good moves here for black. Lots of good moves here, my friends. They can do it. I will say, imagine this, like this is totally something for this, I, I've said it before, but the beginning position as well as this, definitely something to spar. Like you wanna be able to beat people at your level because they're gonna make mistakes. And the higher up you get, the more tenacious the defense will be. And you know, these guys haven't played abysmally. Yeah, they have to, yeah, they have. But let me just say, <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, the higher up you get, the more resistance you are going to face. Queen B1's a good move. I like that one a lot. So Rook C4, King E3 is a nice Sook Swung position. I like Queen B1. That was a good one. King D2 loses immediately to Queen B4, Rook C3, King D4. Ah, it's a rough life here. Rough life. So here we got the expected, King E3, and it's just a nice, solid question. Kosa's got 10 minutes on the clock. Look at that thing. 10 minutes. 10 minutes, buddy. Yeah, Iran's an amazing, uh, even without Ferruja, man. Okay, here we go. Rook C5, good move. Yeah, we're just going to push him a little bit. going to push him. Now, this is kind of clever. We're going to play king c4 here, I assume. 
And then if king e4, we're just going to say rook c6 and be like, boss, are you going to are you going to step me all the way back? You going to step me? I don't approve, I don't approve of that message. Why are you why are you, why are you making it easy, boss? Do you think Costa Coast could have figured it out? If you just played king c4, I don't know about that. I don't know if he could have figured it out. King d4, default. Let's go. Bam. Easy. Peasy. Dr. Sneezy. Right? Come on. There we go. Kostya is white. It should... It's, yeah, it's, 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 that's kind of obvious, right? Even a, I know Boomer GM doesn't always set it up the prettiest, but there it is at the bottom. He's at the bottom of the board with A1 sitting right next to him. It's true. It's true. The little, uh, little pictures are reversed. I get it. All right, so queen a3, king b6, king c4 is el avioso. I'm sure there's other ways of doing this, though. El, el, el avioso has got to be el way to go. Oh. Look at that, 11 minutes. It's so, so you know, it's funny, like, uh, queen d2, did, did I like that move? Not sure I like what Costa Coast is doing, man. Is he gonna start stinking up the dojo again? What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? You had such a clear path, and now you're doing this to me. Oh, check to the miserable king. Okay. I have a bad feeling he wants to put his queen too close. Oh man, he's making it hard for himself. Well, I don't know. I don't know if Costa Coast is gonna be able to do it, man. I just don't know. Stinking up the dojo. Stinking up the dojo. Isn't there a method to this madness? Mostly. Mostly. David is white, by the way. Is that, is that right? <laughs> I better have that part of it right. <laughs> no, buddy. David's... <laughs> Shoot, guys. I'm sorry. I get this. See that? Talking all this smack and I can't even figure out who's who. David is black, thank you very much. Stinking up the dojo. Stinking it up. Tebow, David is black. Now, it, was, it should be obvious. It should be obvious to me. Boomer GM here. And uh, because he's got David's up at the top there with A8 next to his name. Coast Coastal's got A1 next to his name. They're stinking it up today, my friends. All right, King C4. It's interesting that Evan Rosenberg was convinced that it was drawn at the beginning. That I like the, the, the degree of conviction was so high. <laughs> the degree of conviction so high. Who dealt the smelt? That's right, man. That's right. Who dealt the smelt? Well, we know who it was, buddy. We know who it was. Coast to coast, buddy. You gotta stop stinking up the dojo. You know, coast to coast makes fun of people who move too fast, but, uh, Coast to coast, maybe you, maybe you may move a little too fast thinking it was an obvious thing. Not appreciating that maybe, hey, buddy, maybe you should have thought about it a little bit. No, they don't know how to use the queen in Hawaii, dude. They don't know anything about chess in Hawaii, dude. I want to go to Kauai someday. That'd be a fun trip, man. Bruce goes there every summer. His, uh, See, this started at move 25. We're now, we're, we're getting there with the move count, by the way. We're getting there. We're almost at 25. He married a woman who grew up in Hawaii. And that's why they are there every summer. <laughs> Zondebach is here. Now, I think Zondebach, now just tell me if this is right, man. I was thinking about this. So in German, there's ein Zundebock. And I think that Zondebach 
is going to be the Dutch equivalent of Zundbok. And Zundbok is the scapegoat. Scapegoat. Now, the scapegoat, totally trippy biblical thing, man, where you, let, you literally let one of the goats escape. It's weird, man. <laughs> you let one of the goats escape. I don't know, that's a thing about letting go of sin or something like that. You know, I, actually, it's really complicated. And I think people actually disagree exactly what the hell's going on with the scapegoat. But <laughs> that is the original idea of the scapegoat. <laughs> Why are we hunting goats, though? Good question. <sighs> Can you knock him out, boss? Can you knock him out? Come on, buddy. You had that steely determination with Bruce. Steely. The steely determination. We missed Endgame Sensei for a while. Things were going on. It's hard sometimes. Like, for example, Coast to Coast is playing a tournament this weekend. I was playing in some tournaments recently myself. So we don't always do it. But it's, it's good practice. And we're kind of like going to use these videos if people want to watch them to see how terrible Bruce and Kosti play with, with the hope that maybe just seeing how bad these chumps play would somehow be edifying, you know? Probably not edifying, you know? But still, there's the hope of like maybe if you watch these chumps play, you're not going to get better. But, you know, there's a hope out there. So we're going to, you know, connect it, put a link to the YouTube video on the site. Probably just make people worse. You know, probably just make people worse, but this is the content we provide over here at the Chess Dojo training program. What happened to the senior qualifiers? All right, let's talk about it, buddy. Oof, oh, it was painful, my friends. So imagine this. There were four GMs and then a pretty steep drop-off. So six rounds, first three rounds, most everybody wins, all the GMs win. So then I play Yermo, big, big fight. I got the black pieces. I win that game. I'm pumped. I'm like, oh. And the other two guys drew. So it was like, okay, Jesse's in the lead. Next round, I play this dude, GM Fishbine. What happens? I win. I win. Epic struggle. So that's the morning round of the final day. And it was a beautiful win. Really, you know, big struggle. And it was like a really long game. Went forever. Uh, I think I was pressing the advantage for most of it. Anyway, so I, whether I was exhausted or whatever, I lose the final round, dude. So I had five out of five going to the final round, and I'm playing uh, GM Gurevich. Oh, God, it still burns me up. It still burns me up. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. King uh, B4, here's the move. So I did not qualify. I had a good tournament but I did not qualify. Burned me up. I just had to draw that game. I was black. At some point, I'm going to look at all these games, uh, of course, as I do. Oh, it still kills me. It still kills me. Mr. Bruce, play, play King B4, boss. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, only one, only one person qualified. Only one. There can only be one, as the song says. Or whatever, you know, whatever game show, whatever that was. There can only be one. Highlander. There can only be one. Yep. I think uh, that was a question of like, what would be the trickiest thing to do here? It's so obviously lost, but what, what, what is the trickiest thing? To, maybe Rook H, I mean, maybe Rook A6 is the only thing you can do anyway. But the hope would be like that Black lets you move your king back and then you fight for that uh, six rank. He doesn't have to let you though. That's, a, that's one of the bummers of chess. <laughs> they don't gotta let you. 
Yeah. Who are the other people that play in the championship? So there was a tournament this last weekend that I unfortunately I couldn't go to. So there's two qualifying spots and then by rating. My rating really is tanked. If I could bring my rating back up to where it was or even close to where it was, I would just qualify by rating, you know? Oof. And then I feel like I'm playing well, but the problem, no tournaments. No tournaments around for me to play. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Very good. Hard to... Now, there is... I think um, king f1 is a dirty trick here. So that if king g3, rook h3 is a draw. A really dirty trick draw. So now, what does black have to do? Back the queen off, boss. Put <laughs> Back that queen off. Put it on a square like d4. Okay, let's see what... what Mr. Proust is doing here. What do you want, boss? You gotta be real careful here. You don't you don't burn my soul up. <laughs> That's right, Seth. That's right. You're preaching to the choir, buddy. You're preaching to the choir. Yep. I'm sorry, King F1, I meant King C8. I'm a boomer GM, man. I can get things turned around. <laughs> now over here at the, the boom room, they play gangsta chess all day, every day. <laughs> nice. Well, there it is. I'm in the boom room. What do they do in the boom room? Well... I can only say this, when they got in, they said, what happens in the boom room stays in the boom room. So I can't tell you anything more about what happened in the boom room. So in the book, am I right that it's, uh, that it's uh, scapegoat in Dutch? That Zondebok is scapegoat in Dutch? The two more Polgar mates for the next year. Ooh, you guys are cold, man. It's cold to say something like that. Nice. See? See? I got some skills. I got some good skills. Now, queen e1, king g2, queen e4, and then king g3 is what we want. Don't... You could really blow it here by going queen d1, king g2, queen f3, and then king g3. Boom. No, no, no lo puedo. Don't do that. Queen d5 works here fine. So many moves. I like queen e1, king g2, queen e4. It's, it's very similar, though. You want that king to be the puncher, the jabber. Mr. Proust kind of, well, he's getting a little frisky with the time with 19 seconds here. Zonabok is our scapegoat on the, the server, man, because he's always talking about openings. People just like giving him, giving him the business about his opening talk. It's rough, dude. People are so cruel. <laughs> All right, good. King G2. Make him work for it, Coasty Coast. Make him work. <laughs> Book. To follow the mirrored coordinates. All right, queen d1, not the most impressive, but should get the job done. Now, queen d4 is a good, well, fine, queen e1, fine. This is about crispy critters, my friends. Done. Okay, we'll bring these guys in, have a brief chat about it. And um, and then we're gonna go take a quick break to do dojo talks. Let's start here. We'll uh, we'll give Proust the word here, steer. Mr. Proust, how you doing, buddy? Tired. Tired. I get it. Uh, what do you think? Winning or drawing? 
Oh, I think it's winning, yeah. Yeah, it's winning, right. Um, yeah, and I think it was cool to watch because there was, uh, you guys both made it a little easier than it needed to be, but still, that's, that's practical play right there. Hmm. Yeah, it seemed pretty hard to hold on to the pawn. Um, like, you played rook b4, which allowed him to cut, well, win the pawn, and then then Kostya allowed you to cross the fourth rank. Also, like, uh, criminal sin. But eventually, it is impossible to stop those things from happening. Yeah.